とピッコンさん Yes, we're live. <laughs> okay.、Uh, yes, so、um, we are again in the conservation department in the Forest Museum.、Uh, my name is Jens Gold. I'm the photograph conservator here. And、uh, today we try to explain what the debris type is.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, that's the plan. Yes, Inge, that's the plan. That's the plan. And if you、yeah. have any questions or comments, you can use the comments. Type the comments below and we'll try to answer,、mm -hmm. or we'll answer later. Yeah. yeah. Okay.、Um, the deferred type.、Um, actually, today we're talking about the photographic、uh, process or technique which was the very first commercially used photographic technique ever. When it came to the world, it was like、um, yeah, in our time or Like、uh, the moon landing or something like this, or the nuclear bomb, or something <laughs> <laughs> really, really big, which, which、uh, made a big impact、mm -hmm. for, for everyone. And、um, yeah, what is a d e g u e r t y p e and how does it look like?、Mm -hmm. uh, in, and why does it have the name d e g u e r t y p e It comes from the name d e g u e r which was the guy who stands for this invention together. With another person、uh, with the name Nieps. So, these people in partnership、uh, developed a photographic technique which was announced the、uh, 19th of August、uh, 1839.、Yeah. So、this is a while ago. Yeah, that's the birthday. That's the photograph. His birthday, the、yeah. official one. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the same time around that, there were also other people before and after this date. Which、uh, worked in the same direction to develop the photographic technique, but they actually, all of them, they didn't know what they really were coming up with.、Uh, but the daguerreotype was the unique thing which,、um, uh, which then uh, uh, kind of、uh, yeah, conquered the, conquered the world.、Mm -hmm. Blew everyone's mind? Yeah. Should we have a look? So, we have a look. So,、uh, today we know all photography and we,、um, we know how to look at this. And that time, nobody k n o w really what is actually happened. So, we have here last time I showed this uh, uh, case, it's an American case、uh, which has a、uh, daguerreotype in it, and it's outside is the Mr. Daguerre,、mm -hmm. with his name,、mm -hmm. right? The guy himself, yeah. Yes, and so we see here an image, and it's kind of looking in the mirror.、Right? Yeah. You see a little bit the camera or the. And you see i n g r i d now, maybe?、Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe not.、Uh, someone、right. says it's a bit. Uh, you're a bit low, so、yeah. maybe you try to speak up. Okay. Yeah. So,、um, <laughs> well, you see, it's kind of a mirror like image,、mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you see a negative, you see a positive, or you see yourself.、Mm -hmm. And this is because of the properties of this image material.、Uh, the daguerreotype or the photographic image is made on a silver plate. It's a polished silver plate.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, why is it a silver plate? Well, To, uh, to do traditional photography from that time on until the end of traditional photography and the、uh, digital revolution. Until then, the, the major part, the very, very major part of all photography is silver based. So, what you need to make a photograph is、um, a silver and you need a halogen. So, before the gear could really come in here with this and, and the apps, so somebody else,、uh, for example, a guy named Schulze. 17 something,、uh, discovered that、uh, silver nitrate was、uh, in a way light sensitive. And other people like Davy and Wedgwood and others, they worked with halogens and silver and found out this 
it's very light sensitive, and so on. And they were experimenting. But what the GER did, and NEPS, they found out that you can uh, expose plate uh, which has silver halides on the silver surface. Mm -hmm. You can develop it. And we go over here. Mm -hmm. So you put uh, what what did the gear the, the gear type people did? They had a, a polished silver surface, and these plates are ca also called Sheffield plates. They are later on industrial produced. So it's copper here on the backside, it's silver here. So it's a thin silver layer, and they put this uh, silver plate on a con container with a halogenate. For example, iodide. This is iodide. This is a crystal. It's element iodide, uh, and it goes from the solid state right to the gas state. Mm -hmm. And this gas or this uh, iodide together on the silver plate with the silver uh, makes it makes it light sensitive. So this is a box where you put the, the plate on. So mm -hmm. I made this for a workshop. This is not the old one. So you have your plate. There's mm -hmm. actually an image on it. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you put the. It's polished uh, when you when you want to use it. You put it in the in the um, container on top of the container. Mm -hmm. and then you open the inside of the container, so the gases can come to the surface of the, um, of mm -hmm. the plate. And here's you see there's a container in it, mm -hmm. and uh, underneath is then the iodide. And when it comes, the fumes go onto the plate, okay. right? So and then you close it again. You take it out, and you go to your camera back and you for example here we have an original plate if this is now light sensitive in the dark room of course you put it in your plate holder and close the door put it in the camera and then you have your lens here the, you, you have the lens closed of course uh, you before that you do focus on everything with a ground glass and then you open uh, this up here so that the light sensitive area is opened and the light from the lens can go on it and then uh, you you open the lid and you count mm -hmm. and exposure times in this time very, very long okay how how long so depending how good you have sensitized and how good your lens was it's about something like 30 seconds to a minute for the average mm -hmm. sometimes longer sometimes uh, faster and uh, yeah and that's why people had to sit in funny chairs you know where they yeah. had fixed and look a little bit stiff in the portraits and so on yeah because you had to sit totally yeah. still so back to daguerre mm -hmm. uh, what he found out was that if you can there's an image on the plates even you don't see it it's called technically it's called the, the latent image mm -hmm. it's too much information now for this short video yep. but anyway <laughs> this image uh, is there and can be developed and it was put on such a little machine there was mercury inside and it was heated up here so mm. very poisoning yeah thing not a very healthy no, way of and, uh, also doing photo that the guy himself died on mercury mm. anyway he put it on here and the mercury fumes would develop the image mm -hmm. so and here after that yeah it was important to fix it and uh, there was a guy in uh, great britain um, a German astronomer Herschel, his name, he discovered that you could do that with so, uh, sodium thiosulfate. Mm -hmm. And this is, it was really the key for a, a lot of photography, all the photography at all since after that. Yeah. Anyway, all these plates, they had images on, sur on the surface, but mm -hmm. this surface, uh, or these images, they were like dust. So they are really, really sensitive for mechanical damage. Mm -hmm. So they had to go somewhere in yeah and last time we talked about the red sodium positive and uh, we said about the gear type e, there was this uh, these housings mm -hmm. and uh, here we have uh, some which are have some damages uh, we have the class frame the european style or the american style then we go further on here we have uh, american union cases are they called they are made from uh, shellac mm -hmm. because here we have they had to to be protected from yes air so they had to be protected from air and mm. also from the touching and from the touching yeah. yes so the fingers. Uh, yes. you don't have uh, gloves on yeah because I, when i handle this stuff i don't want to 
floating down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Very clean hands. Yeah, and I'm a conservator, so my hands are so clean. Yes. Yeah, they are completely free of everything. Yeah. Anyway, back to these cases here. Yeah. So we have, for example, this uh, union case, and these are unused ones with all the advertisement in it. You know, mm. it tells you what this is a type case, yeah, made by this and this firm uh, uh, company, mm -hmm. and they are patented and so on. And there are also other models, uh, for example, here with leather. Uh, and we have this one, which has a kind of a Japanese touch. Mm, it's quite beautiful. With a Rushi Luck kind uh, on top, and a mother of pearl inlay, right? Mm -hmm. And it looks like a little book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing in it? No. There's nothing in it. It's also one which was unused. Mm -hmm. um, so, and uh, another thing is, of course, this was the most important thing to protect them. Yeah. Right? And going also from the design in the tradition of the major uh, painting, which we talked last time about. Mm -hmm. So I would say we go over and look at the different sizes also. Yeah. We have five minutes left. Okay. So here we have the, the biggest one. It's yeah, okay. oversized, uh, really a big uh, American um, yeah, type. It's from huge. Our, from our collection, it's a huge. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's fantastic and lots of lots of detail. Yeah. What was also one of the big advantages of this direct positive uh, technique. So each one is unique. There is no second one. Mm. So not like we have multiple printing. Mm, this, this came a little bit later. Yeah. So multiple th prints with Talbot and so on. So this is the only one existing of this. This is the only one existing of this. Yeah. Of course, these things could be re-photographed uh. with a particular type or with other technique later, but this is the original. Yeah. So it's right? really unique. So here on the table we have different formats too. Maybe I should put the light on. And here on this side, maybe we look at this here rather. Okay. Here's a little bit smaller one, but also. Um, it's a half plate uh, image, mm -hmm. yes, and then we have here the uh, European and the uh, yeah, mostly European designs with this frame and the glass and, mm -hmm. and that. Okay, but it's hard to look at them because yeah. of the mirror-like uh, material. Yeah. And you need, uh, you need um, a special light for that. In the, in the 19th century, they didn't have electric light mm. and they didn't have all these diffuse things. They had the, the, the light from the window and they had the light from candles and petrol and gas. Mm. So they had always light which came from one side. Yeah. Okay. So we have here uh, in the, um, yes, in the internet, we have put out this image of this colored, yeah. hand colored. Uh, and it's a bit difficult to see it here. It's very difficult yeah. to see. So we go over. Yeah to the retro stand where we have the polarized line mm -hmm. and which is very good to look at things and so here you can see go around here the same image can you see it please? just sorry just have to <laughs> get uh -huh. this one yeah now we can see it very well yeah it's beautiful it's it beautiful and it's hand colored and it looks like a color photograph yes where how we are used to yeah and that was one of the main critics of uh, yeah, against uh, the gear type or photography that it was not in color. Yeah, because the world is and actually it was in color. Often the miniature painter, which was the critic, the major critic. Yeah. But many, many times the miniature painter because ended up as a gear typist, yeah. <laughs> hand coloring his own images. Yeah. Right? Had to find a new trade. Yeah. yeah. So this was a quite usual uh, size here. Yeah. Yes. I just have one question here. Mm -hmm. uh, one who's asking if they had to be stored in a dark room, but they didn't. No. 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 These are really stable think this is the first photograph technique used and they are really really stable mm. and we still have them around today yeah. right so uh, so we have this as the usual size you saw the big the biggest mm -hmm. we have in the collection there are many in between mm -hmm. they are the first also then after a short while already standard sized mm -hmm. because of the housings which need to be produced and camera bags and etc uh, so, but we have also very, very sm small ones. For example, this here. Mm -hmm. These are miniatures, right? Wow. Really small, you see. Yeah. And so uh, you could put it in your pocket. You could put it in your pocket with your. You know, this is, for example, this lady, mm -hmm. and then you could close this mm -hmm. and open up the other side, and then wow. you see the the husband. 
Okay, um, just reflection. Yes, there we see the husband. So they, I'm sure they loved each other, but they look very serious. <laughs> yeah, they because do. Because they had to sit such uh, very quiet, right? Yeah. And here you see a plate which was used for miniature uh, mm. production. So there was a camera with four lenses, four mm -hmm. exposures are made, mm. and then the customer would choose one, okay. and they clipped it out and put it, for example, in a medallion or something like okay. that. Yeah. But what did they do with the, the rest? They are here. Yeah. And they could also take them off and use the plate again, or would they uh, keep you them? You could do that, but not if, when it is cut. It mm. doesn't make so much sense. No. But otherwise, you could pull it, polish away mm. the image and reuse it. Mm. That's uh, possible. And mm. that is also describing the danger when there's no glass on. Yeah. You can just wipe by it touching off. with the finger, you can wipe off the image. Yes. So if anyone finds a daguerreotype in a drawer or something, and it's a bit dark or... Yeah, uh, don't polish it. Don't polish it. Don't go Please. on and <laughs> put some silver polish on, so then give it to a conservator yeah. and let it check out. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how much time we have uh, left? We're actually quite finished, but... Okay, good. But, but uh, can mm -hmm. we just have a look at that yeah. one? Yeah, uh, this is your uh, Danish one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Norwegians uh, Norwegian uh, daguerreotypes, they look the same, but this is really beautiful. It has a lot of contrast. Mm. And you can see the image very good. And this is a typical design. Yeah. And uh, they, over time, the, the, the daguerreotype here was around about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the, the process got improved again and again. So uh, the plates were galvanic uh, treated, uh, 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 gold toning was used quite quickly and so on, which improved the contrast. Mm. And also the speed went up uh, so that the, um, the exposure time was much shorter by, for example, using much better lenses mm -hmm. uh, and uh, different sensitization uh, techniques. Yeah. For example, uh, the, uh, additional um, 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 halogen. Mm. Uh, so usually they started with iodide and then they had a mix of iodide and bromide and so on. Mm. So they have mm. had a lot of te technical achievements yes, yes. yeah mm. but there came other techniques and then uh, the time was over for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're still beautiful to look at they're still beautiful to look at mm. okay thank you for watching thank you bye 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 bye